in New York City in the 1980s when the crack epidemic tore through our communities and destroyed our families. This epidemic was a man-made crisis designed to finish off my community. My mother and father steered our family the best that they could, utilizing the Black Freedom Movement as our only source of survival. Through my eyes, I have watched friends gunned down. Through my eyes, I have watched families go hungry. Through my eyes, I have watched men leave on vacations behind bars. Very few people who don't look like me, and even some who do look like me, were there. I joined this movement because I believe that for the first time, there is real possibility to protect young girls who look like me. Young girls who are living with my circumstances, not in 1980, but in 2019. In 1851, Sojourner Truth asked the question, ain't I a woman? She was at a woman's convention in Akron, Ohio, with I'm sure a lot of women who did not look like her. Today we ask a new question. The new question must be, intersectionality for who? I ask this question as a black woman who mourns the loss of seven-year-old Jasmine Barnes, who was killed in a gunfight that had nothing to do with her. I ask this question as a black woman who feels the pain of Judge Glenda Hatchett's daughter-in-law who bled to death after a C-section because all records indicate that women with the best health insurance still cannot get the proper care in this country. I ask this question because seven-year-old Jacqueline Kale died at the border from dehydration. I ask this question on behalf of trans women who are the most targeted and the least protected in our society. And I have to imagine that Kimberly Crenshaw, when she conceived the term and the thought of intersectionality, was thinking about the stories that I have just told. To all my sisters, I see you. To my Muslim sisters, I see you. To my Latina sisters, I see you. To my Asian sisters, I see you. To my disabled sisters, I see you. And to my Jewish sisters, do not let anyone tell you who I am. I see all of you. I see you and I hear your pain. Whether you are a doctor or a sex worker, or one of the 800,000 furlough workers who have not received their paychecks, I see you. And to my black sisters, I feel you deep down in my bones and in my soul. And I know that many of you heard a battle cry. You didn't know if I was okay. So you came, yes. and you called, yes. and you texted, yes. and you tweeted. Yes. Let me tell you and make sure that you understand who I am. No matter what they say, no matter what they write, I will not bend. My back is up straight. I will not bend. I will not break. I am who I am for over 20 years. And no media outlet and no one else will tell you. I'm telling you, I love all people. And no one will define for me who I am. Only I can do that. And let me say this last thing. They asked me, what are you going to do? How are you going to handle this situation? I came to the Women's March and I brought people with me who were not coming before I made the call. And I'll tell you this, I came to do a job with my sisters and we will complete the job and no one will be discarded from this movement. We will stand 
stand together. We will love one another. We will protect one another. We have nothing to lose but our chains. God bless you. Go